Hello, brothers and sisters. It's your weekly pastor's message. Lent is about here and very excited about what we're doing. This is a wonderful time, a really important time to get close with the Lord and to have a joyful and beautiful Lent. So we have Ash Wednesday this coming Wednesday. Our Masses will be at 8.30 in the morning with the school and 7 p.m. in the evening. And just remember, as I mentioned before, the, the way we're going to distribute ashes will be by sprinkling it on the head. This is how the Pope receives the ashes. This is how the tradition is observed in Europe and actually has been so for a number of centuries. So I know there's some people who say, I want the black cross on my forehead. Well, because of COVID, we'll just do this uh, other, again, ancient and venerable tradition of imposing ashes. And the thing I want really want to uh, emphasize with everyone is that um, anyone can come to Ash Wednesday Mass and to receive ashes. So we open wide the doors to uh, to the Catholic Church. So maybe some you may know somebody who, um, or you yourself may not have been a church for a while, or maybe not be Catholic or whatever, and and want to enter into the penitential nature of the season, come to come to Mass and, and receive ashes. That being said, too, our major prayer as a community, as a parish community, this Lent is going, is going to be Stations of the Cross. Right? There's no better way to deepen our walk with the Lord than walking with Him and Our Lady uh, on the road of Calvary and in this, in this uh, again, ancient and beautiful prayer of the Stations of the Cross. And we have our new stations that, we can, that we'll be using. Um, and you may notice that uh, we've actually reordered the stations so that um, we follow the image of Jesus on his way to Calvary. So now our station number one is over by the, the chapel, the cry room, and works that way around, around the church. Um, so we're, gonna, we're going to um, meet on, on Fridays at six o'clock for, for stations. Now, because of COVID, uh, you know, some people may have their own hard copy of our Stations of the Cross. If you have your own hard copy, bring it with you. We also have it on PDF that's downloadable. We're gonna, we'll put it up on the website so you can download it into your phone because what we can't have is people pick up the books and then leave them there again, right? Because of COVID, we're not, we're not quite out of the woods on that yet. So please bring your hard copy with you. Uh, download it on your phone so that you can, you can follow along uh, when, when, we're, when we're praying. Uh, we probably will have a few that we'll be able to leave out and to t for people to take with them. But, but please use your uh, heart, own hard copy or, again, the, the electronic copy on your phone. And again, anyone can come. Anyone can come and pray the Stations of the Cross. So maybe you have a friend or a family member who, again, hasn't been to church in a while. Invite them along. Just say, come with us. And, uh, and then we will have our priest, prophet, and king meeting afterwards. Uh, again, our principle here at the parish is when we can gather, we should gather. When we can gather, we should gather. That, that's true for Mass. I, again, encourage people to start coming back to Mass if you haven't been already. We have social distancing. We have our, our sanit sanitation protocols in, in place. We have a lot of room. And, uh, and it's just great. I, and every week I see more and more people coming back. Um, and that's true also of our Stations of the Cross and our, and our Christ the King, uh, Christ Priest, Prophet, and King Lenten uh, mi mission that we're doing on Fridays. So, so to come and let's gather together. I know how, how important it is that we connect, that we gather together as members of the body of Christ of this parish. Uh, so let's, let's do that. And don't forget, our Lenten retreat, February 20th on a Saturday. It's going to be a great uh, time together of talks, of prayer, of opportunity for confession and adoration, and again, of being together, right? Well, if we, if we can gather, we should gather. You don't have to sign up. Please just come and take part, and let's, let's uh, use that to have a great and wonderful Lent. We have one of our real uh, beautiful initiatives during Lent is our 40 days for life. You know, these, these 40 days of, of uh, activity to, to reach out to those who are in a crisis pregnancy and, and help them to make the choice for life. We know that abortion is the number one social justice issue of our time. 
It is uh, preeminent among the issues, as our, as our own bishops have said, in the U.S. Uh, and so this is really our, our, uh, our social action as a parish and our outreach. And we have uh, our Life is Sacred group who's, who's uh, organizing that. And there's really two ways to, to, to participate um, in our 40 Days for Life. The first is prayer. Prayer uh, from home or, you know, we want to offer these prayers for, for those who will be um, praying outside the uh, Planned Parenthood clinic. The good news is that, you know, the Lovejoy Clinic, which had been the major abortion site in Portland for, for a long time and was a, was a place where we did a lot of praying on 40 Days for Life in years past, it closed, right? The power of prayer, the power of the, of the voice for life. Uh, so now the, the, the other way to participate is, is to actually go to the Planned Parenthood Clinic, this time in Beaverton, uh, and to join those others who will be peacefully and lovingly praying uh, outside, outside of that clin clinic, so eventually that clinic will close too. Uh, so I um, uh, just want to encourage everyone to take part in that in, in, in either, either of those ways. Um, just to give you a heads up too, there's on March 13th, the Life is Sacred will be uh, sp sponsoring a class for sidewalk counseling of how best to engage in that. And so uh, the, there's, there'll be more information in the bulletin. You can go to the Life is Sacred page on our website. And our, our new uh, coordinator for Life is Sacred is Sabrina Franks. Um, and so please con contact her uh, for further information. Um, and you can do that th through the webpage. So the first Sunday of Lent is our annual ACA, our Archbishop's Catholic Appeal. This is this annual appeal, which is so important for the work of the archdiocese, for the, for the archbishop's ministry here in the archdiocese, um, with all the, um, we say, the, the, um, the programs and whatnot that we do as a diocese. And, and you know, we'll, we'll, you'll hear from me on, on, at the homily on that Sunday about it. You'll be receiving those envelopes in, in the mail to, to make a, a, a heartfelt donation. Uh, but this is just a really good way of supporting Archbishop Sample. We know what a fantastic shepherd he is um, and, and how dedicated he is to, to our holiness and getting us all to heaven and of really spreading the gospel here in the Archdiocese of Portland. And so just to be on the lookout for that, give you the heads up. Uh, in the past, Christ the King has always been a very generous parish to, the, to this campaign. And I thank you in advance for your generosity um, that this, all this, the, the, this collection brings in and enables such good work in, in, our, in our diocese, especially in the formation of priests, that we, that in the formation of our seminarians, for our uh, outreach on, camp, on college campuses around the archdiocese, for our Catholic students there. You know how to, what a vulnerable and important time that is for, for young Catholics. Um, so there's just a lot, of, a lot of good things that come from that. And so thank you for your generosity. I wanted to give you all a heads up too. You'll, you'll notice when you come into church that there now is kind of a wall in the middle of the sanctuary. What that wall is, is basically, I guess what you'd call a construction wall. It's a shield so that as we uh, go forward with our, the moving of the tabernacle and everything that has to be done, it's so just a way to keep it out of sight so you don't have to kind of look at the uh, construction progress. So that's going to be up there for the next uh, several weeks as, as we um, get, get, that, get this, this uh, change happening in, in the church. Um, and um, so we can continue to pray for that, for, the, uh, for the, uh, that, that, that goes smoothly and safely. Um, I just got word that our tabernacle has cleared customs and is on its way to us. Uh, the the altar um, is continues to make progress, so uh, we're um, we, yeah, we're we're right on target uh, on on this project. One other piece of of this that that uh, we're we're going to do is that you know coming out of our multicultural committee, we uh, are are bringing in more images of of Our Lady and of other saints that reflect the cultural diversity of our parish. You know, we have Our Lady of Guadalupe over on that one side. Um, and recently we were just given a statue of Our Lady of Levang uh, that, we, that we'll need to, to uh, display as well. Um, 
and and to, to continue with that. Um, that being the case, you know, with the, with these images of Our Lady, according to the documents of the church, is that we're not supposed to put them like next to each other. So um, so having Our Lady of Guadalupe on, on that side, that uh, a proper place for Our Lady of Lavang uh, will be this the other side of the church where um, where Mary and Joseph are right now. And then we would bring the statues of Mary and Joseph actually into the sanctuary so that everybody could have a nice, clear uh, view of them and to give you something more to look at when you're looking into the sanctuary. Uh, so you'll notice that that shifting as well. And then that will also free up uh, more room for the, these other uh, images and statues that will be coming again to reflect the richness and the and the, the the cultural richness and the ethnic richness of our of our parish, which is truly a joy, and and uh, we want want to make sure that that's uh, rightly celebrated and honored in in our in our church. So you heard me last week about the cancellation of the baptismal cl baptism class. That class has now been rescheduled, so it will be on. Sunday, February 28th at noon. Sunday, February 28th at noon. If you would like to be a, take part in that class, you must contact Julie, register with Julie and Durko uh, so we can um, have an idea of who, who's coming. So again, the baptism class is rescheduled February 28th at noon. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. God bless you. Have a fruitful Lent, and we'll see you around.